summer is coming warmer weather is on the way whether we like it or not so i say let's just embrace it let's create some fun and easy diys to kind of freshen up our space and if you think that's a good idea then keep watching on this channel i love to share easy diys and budget home decor and if we haven't met yet my name is lisa and this is our gray house okay jumping right in to DIY number one, I'm using wood glue. I cannot stand the wood glue container. It just leaks, I don't know. I just don't like the wood glue container, but it doesn't matter. So this is not an original idea from myself. I found it somewhere on the internet. If I can find the inspo piece, I will link it below. But essentially we're making, we're taking a little wood pallet from Dollar Tree and we're gonna be making it into kind of like a flower box type thing. And so what I did was glued a paint stick on the bottom kind of as a base and then I'm gluing another part of the paint stick on the front and I'm taking some craft sticks and I've cut them down to size and those are going to be the sides and you're going to be able to see kind of the little box that I made in just a second but this is how I did mine I'm not sure how the original person did theirs but this is how I did mine and so after it's dry I'm just taking some white paint and I am painting and originally I was just going to do like the outside but then i kind of did a little bit of the inside and then once you start I, I just couldn't like not leave it i had just to paint all the inside and getting in all the cracks and crevices was kind of hard but i mean i managed to do it but you know i'm just like man that i made more work for myself but anyway i probably should have stained it or something but here you can kind of see the box that i created and you know it's gonna be it's gonna be cute though y'all now this goes to show you that you do not need a Cricut to make cute stuff. I just used the inspo piece. I, I made a copy of it and I used it to kind of trace on with carbon paper onto my little piece here. I actually wish I would have hand lettered myself. I just used the inspo piece as inspiration because you'll see in a second, I, I kind of wanted some stuff bigger, but in the end, you know, you just use the inspiration piece. If you don't have a Cricut, you don't have to have one. You could do it yourself. Now, see, you can't see the seeds and blooms at the bottom. So I wish I kind of would have moved some stuff around and, and kind of did it a little bit more like, yeah, I don't know, just, just changed it up a bit. But this is going to go on a tear tray kind of as a little filler piece. And I like how it turned out. Hey, I am popping. Hey, I don't know what that's about. Hey, I'm popping in here to tell you guys, I do have a Facebook crafting group, a crafting group on Facebook. It's called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. I would love it if you join and uh, if you join, share a project that you're working on or something that's inspiring you because we would love to kind of encourage you on your creative journey. The link will be in the description box below. For DIY number two, this is quick and easy. I just took some little flower shaped things from Hobby Lobby. They were in the Easter section, so they were 75% off when I bought mine. And I took these little tiny little baby clothespins. I think I got them from Dollar Tree. Next time I do it, I would use the little bit bigger ones because these are a little hard to manage, but you basically just glue the flower little thing or whatever embellishment you want to the um, little clothespin. You're gonna be making a photo clip holder. Turns out, super cute and you can change it out for the seasons so here i have mine and as you can see they just look they just look cute on there kind of add a little you know to your little photos and they can hang up on a jute twine really nicely i think it turned out super cute for diy number three we're taking this little cutting board it is from dollar tree and i'm just trying to find the center and i'm going to be using my new little miter saw that i have uh, to make it into a house shape and I'm just trying to kind of I don't know pencil in where I'm going to be cutting and stuff like that you guys know I mostly do that with my heart I don't measure with a uh, ruler too much I tried doing Waverly wax and the color antique on this and it just when I go to wipe it off I felt like I was like literally just wiping off the entire stain that I put on so it just felt weird so then I went in with a sander a piece of sandpaper to kind of rough it up and hopefully take off any um, sheen or like coating that had out on it and then I went again with it, Waverly wax in the color antique and stained it and to be completely honest I didn't notice a difference <laughs> I mean I don't think it just it's either just not taking stain well or I don't know but it didn't really look that much darker not as dark as I wanted it to then I had this heart. It was a leftover piece from another project and I just painted it black and now I'm using my Cricut to um, add the words or add the word love to it. You could totally handwrite this if you wanted to. 
I'm going to take some hot glue and attach that at an angle to the front of the piece. And then I'm going to take some jute twine and just wrap it around a couple of times. And then I'm just going to tie a little bow in that one corner. And that just kind of finishes it off. It's a very simple piece, but it'll look great on a tear tray or just like in a little vignette where you need something kind of neutral, um, but you want something super cute. And this is how it turned out. I love it. I think it just looks so cute and it would look great in the background of a tear tray or like I said, in a vignette somewhere and it's very neutral and we'll go with just about any type of decor. Oh dang y'all, we're on DIY number four. So I had this little piece that had wood pieces. It held wood pieces like a little tray thing. So I'm using the back because you know what? You don't need to throw it away. You can use the back for a sign. And I am just staining with Waverly Wax and the Color Antique, kind of painting it on and wiping it off with the damp cloth. You, you guys know how I do it. That's how I do it all the time. And it took the stain really well. And so then I made a stencil. I think I got this off the Cricut Design Space thing. It's not something I created, but I'm just trying to center it. Look at me, y'all, using a ruler and everything like I'm a professional. So I'm just trying to get it on kind of as evenly as I can so that it's not Cricut. And it was really intended, I guess, to be a decal, but I'm going to be using it as a stencil. And here we're just pulling it back slowly so nothing pulls up, nothing comes out that's not supposed to, pushing it down to make sure everything's smooth. And then I'm going to be using several different colors. So I'm using white here, and I'm going around that little outer dash line, that pocket thing or whatever. And then I'm using maize. This is my new favorite color, y'all. I just love this yellow color. And I'm doing the sun little burst things at the top and then the sun, the word sunshine in yellow. And then I'm taking this really pretty aqua color and I forget which color it is, but anyway, I'm using it for the rest of the words. And then we're going to pull it back. See, it turned out so good. It turned out so good. I was just super careful with it and I just made sure that my dauber was going up and down so that, that the uh, paint didn't bleed or anything like that. And this is how it turned out. I love it. I think it's gonna just look so cute on my tear tray and I hope you love it too. Dang, we're on DIY number five. I took this wood circle and I'm not sure where I got it but it was in my stash and I'm painting it black. See, easy peasy lemon squeezy. And then that little tobacco basket thing. I don't know if it's called a tobacco basket, but anyway, that little basket thingy I got from Hobby Lobby 75% off. So I was like, yes, thank you. And I am attaching the words, see the good on the front of that circle. And you could totally handwrite this. You could totally use stickers for this part and it would look just as cute. And I didn't want to hot glue it to the basket because I'm just not 100% sure I'm leaving it this way. So what I did was take some masking tape and just kind of adhere it down. And this is how it looks. It turned out so cute. I love it. I'm just trying to figure out a really good way to kind of make it stand up on its own because right now I'm leaning it against something. So I'll have to figure that out. But it turned out super cute, y'all. I think we're on DIY number six. I have this little crate that I got from Dollar Tree and I am painting the bottom portion white and I took some of that my favorite maize color and I'm doing the middle section you know I mixed it with some white so it was lighter and then for the very top section I'm just using maize on its own and then I'm handwriting on you could use your Cricut for this you could use um, a stencil you could use stickers and I'm writing be kind on there and I am drawing on a little B I'm not an artist necessarily, but um, I just like to have fun creating. And I just put some little dash lines just to kind of make it fun. I'm painting in the wings with a white color to, you know, so they stand out a little bit better. And then I'm taking two different kinds of ribbon and I'm wrapping it around the box. I'm using a polka dot and then a buffalo check. And then I'm going to add another, I think I add another polka dot on the other side of that buffalo check so that it's like, you know, kind of like in the middle. Do I? Yep. Here we go. I'm doing it. Yay. I was like, I think I did <laughs> pretty much. I, I think I remembered that. So this is how it turned out. It turned out super cute. I love it. And it would look great on a tear tray or in a vignette in your home. We're not done yet, y'all. We're going to make a pillow, but I'm going to show you some of the mistakes that I made. This is DIY number seven, by the way. And so I'm just measuring out so that my pillow, um, the, cloth here the fabric is 19 inches by 19 inches square and I do that because I want an 18 by 18 pillow 
and I'm going to be using liquid stitch to kind of put it together. So I just need like a little bit of a seam allowance. I've got the zipper here that I got from Hobby Lobby and um, because I want to be able to take the stuffing or the pillow insert out. Here's where I mess up. Not because Captain's here helping. He's trying to help. He tried to help, you know, but um, it, you know, it just didn't work out that way. So I put the liquid stitch down and then when I turned it out, look, the zipper's on the outside, <laughs> which is not horrible because that's actually going to be the bottom. I'll just use that as the bottom, but yeah, it wasn't supposed to be that way. And then you just use the liquid. Now I'm going to show you the better way to do it. So I'm going to put that liquid stitch all the way across and it's just going to go, see, I'm just slowly taking it. And then I'm going to, I have my fabric right sides together. And then I'm going to take that top fabric and pull it across like this. And then I'm going to press it down and I'm going to let it dry. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. It's a little hard to explain, to be honest. You can still kind of see the, um, come on, show the pillows coming. I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> but here's the pillows. The inserts that I use actually were other pillows that have a design on it. You can see the design through there, but not so much when you're standing back out on the street, looking at my front porch. So I think it turned out cute. All right, y'all, last DIY. I took three of these boards that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm going to be putting them together. I have um, some wood glue and I have a love-hate relationship with wood glue. I really like wood glue, but I just don't like the container it's in. I need to find a different container to kind of transfer the wood glue to because it just, it gets on my nerves. Anyways, I'm trying to put a little bit of wood glue in the in-between parts of the board and I'm laying it down onto some craft sticks, some paint sticks and um, clamping together the ends and putting on a bunch of paint things to adhere it all together and weight it down. So then I flip it over once it's dry and I'm adding some more craft sticks that I've cut down and because I like them to look more uniform y'all. I don't like it to just look like random sticks just thrown on there. I don't know. Nobody's gonna see the bag anyway. Who cares? But I'm just putting those to reinforce the different seams that I have on this sign. Now I'm filling in the holes that were on the sign with um, hot glue. And I, I do this because I don't wanna use wood fuller or anything like that. I just find it easier to use the hot glue, especially because I'm just gonna be painting this in a minute. And you're not even gonna notice it. Then I take my little Sharpie tool thingy. I don't know what you call it, but I take off the excess. And then that was some Rustoleum Chalk Ultramat paint in the color linen. And I'm giving it a quick coat. I'm not trying to super do this nicely. I want it to look kind of weathered a little bit rough. And then I made this with my Cricut. Yes, I had to do a Cricut. Could you do it by, on, you know, by hand? Sure you could. My handwriting's not that great. So I'm using this and I've kind of taped it down in the center so that everything is lined up and I'm going to be putting down the top part is going to be a stencil and the bottom part is actual just final letters and so I'm adhering all of that there going to reveal the part that I need to stencil and so yeah it's looking it's looking okay so far now I've got to add some painters tape so that it doesn't go over I'm putting a coat of the Rust-Oleum chalked ultramat paint in the color linen down first to help with the bleeding. And then I'm taking that wonderful color, yellow color, Maze by Waverly. And I'm using a sponge brush that I got from Dollar Tree. And I'm just daubing it, going up and down, up and down, up and down, making sure it's coated and not necessarily pushing the color down, but daubing it on like up and down. I can't, I mean, I don't usually have trouble with it bleeding and it didn't bleed on this project either, but that's just how I do it and i uh, find that it works pretty well i just love that yellow color y'all okay i'm pulling back the stencil and it's looking great i just love the color i love how the sign is looking so far but you just really can't see that sunshine part as well but in the meantime i'm going to be adding some swirly lines at the bottom and i'm also going to be adding with that same little sponge dauber thing i'm just going to be adding some circles all over just kind of I don't know, to make it look fun. So like I said, you really couldn't see the word sunshine, so I'm just gonna outline it roughly with a paint pen and to make it pop a little bit more so you can see it from the distance. And I kind of outlined some of those little swirly lines in the thing. Then I'm taking my little, uh, my little, my um, drill, 
thing and I'm gonna be I marked where I should put some holes because I need to you know add some jute twine to hang it up and look at me using power tools y'all so I'm gonna thread the jute twine in and just gonna secure it so that way I can hang it up on my front porch and y'all get ready for this next part um wow I know you know I was trying this thing with my <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram um, you would have seen in my stories, well, even on TikTok too, um, I was trying this thing with my hair rollers and I was just going to like, you know, be, uh, I don't know, <laughs> see how the hair roller thing turned out, but I'm measuring to see how long of a um, piece of twine I need and all that kind of stuff in order to hang it up. Y'all people saw me with my hair like this, <laughs> but this is how it turned out. Can I say gorgeous? I love it. I, I, I'm, I can't even tell you. I really, really love it. Now, again, the pillows, you can kind of see in this picture the, that there's something in there. I'm going to be eventually getting rid of those pillows or at least taking the stuffing out. But for right now, it's fine. You really can't see it from the street. And even if you can, who cares? <laughs> um, they're my pillows, not yours. And I love them. I love how they turned out. And I think it's just like nice pops of color on my front porch. Thank y'all so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate the company while I craft and create. And I hope you found some inspiration to hopefully freshen up your space for summer as well. And I, I, do, I do videos weekly. So, um, and I have another one coming out. I have two coming out this week for sure. So I hope you don't miss them. And you won't miss them if you hit subscribe and um, you know, ring the bell for notifications and things like that. I really, I really appreciate all the folks that have joined me on this crafting journey. So if you want to follow me on social media, like here on YouTube or over on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook or something like that, my handle is Our Gray House. But just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye!